Hello, Pete here with another vlog and today we're going to be looking at Geo Christmas from Tim Holtz. We featured this recently on a Hot Chance show, we featured it at Craft Stash. It had a great response, I'm sure you're going to love it. It's a fantastic set. It's another one in Tim Holtz's line of Geo style dies. If you want to see what I'm talking about, watch the movie. So, Geo Christmas, what's it all about? Well, first and foremost, there are four in the set. This one is the Christmas tree. Then there's the lovely elegant starburst. Next up we have the bauble, which is their gorgeous facets. It is something that Tim loves this style. And well, judging by the reaction, you love it too. So I'm not gonna fight that, because I love it as well. Now, this is the third. This is gonna be the star of our show today. This is the stag head. It's very elegant. I love the fact that it's not facing forward. It's just looking off to the side. Detail, very faceted, lovely, lovely die. So that's the one that we're gonna to use today. We will be showing samples of the others um, at the end of this video. Now, let's get on with some cutting. First and foremost, I'm gonna be using stencil film as well. So, that's what we'll do first of all. I'll pop my stencil film face down. They, well, actually, no, I'm going to cut face up because they do say cutting face up is better. And I suppose with these complex dies, then they need all the help they can get. I don't need to put that through twice, actually. There we are. So, lovely clean cut. I just need the outline for this one. Let's just pop that out there and there ready to go. There's our beautiful stencil film. I'll just set that off to one side for a second and take the rest out because... Oh, and this is where, incidentally, if you do love the Geo, then it makes sense to invest in a die brush. It will save you so much time and effort in the long run. Now, next up, I think we'll cut the actual stag head from some lovely dark Grey brown card. This is card from our cardstock pack. There are 80 sheets, four of each colour, that's 20 colours in total. Um, but there we are. Now, there's the die brush. Burning its keep. Pop those little bits down there. Give it a little tap and out it pops. Now, you can see there are a few little stubborn bits which you can use your pokey tool or you can just pick them out by hand actually. They're not that stubborn in truth. They've just eluded the die brush. So there we have it. There is the lovely detailed stag cut from card. We'll set that to one side. There are a couple of other dies or die sets rather that I would like to introduce you to. Firstly uh, a set that was very, very popular recently on our Hochanda shows. It's the Circle Words. Now, several dies in the set, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's about 12, actually. Um, and basically, let, let's, let's take the one I'm gonna use. They all have different phrases or things pertaining to Christmas. There's a large circle in there as well. There's a little, there's a little bit which is for a bauble, the top of a bauble, and this lovely little die, which is if you want to hang your bauble as well. And you can make baubles with these and hang them on maybe, because you know how we have those smaller trees sometimes at the top of the stairs or in the hallway when we come through? You can die cut several of these, you can match up your colours and you can hang them on the tree. But we're just going to use these two today. And I'm using, I'm going to cut into some lovely gold mirror card as well. So what I want to do is if I place if I place the number like that, it will cut an aperture. So if you want to cut that aperture into the face of your card, you can do that with this die. However, I'm going to cut it together with the outer circle. And to ensure that that stays exactly where I placed it, I'm going to add some, or some A rather, sticky notelet. So that is going to make sure that I get perfect registration. Same again, through the machine. Ah, 
out it comes. So I can peel that away. The great thing about sticky notelets is they never leave any residue, they never lift the surface of your card. And let's peel that away. And wow, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Really nice in the way it picks up the light as well. So that's 25, obviously the 25th of December. Now, next we are going to look at the lovely die, and I'm looking around and I can't find, oh here it is. This is called Star Trim. Now, there are two trims. There's the large one and the smaller one, and this is an Impresslets. Now, some of you may not have seen Impresslets before, but basically it's a 3D embossing folder. These are 3D Impresslets and a die, so you're getting two technologies for the price of one. And not only does it emboss beautifully, but it cuts it to size. So when we're using Impresslets or when we're using any embossing, what I always like to do is, and this is recommended, spritz your card. So just apply some water front and back. It softens the card so it allows the fibers to stretch and that's very important when you're working with very deep 3D folders. Um, then when it dries, it dries rock solid. So I'm going to use the bottom of my platform and only one cutting plate. This is the only technology at the moment, Impresslets and 3D embossing folders, which require only one cutting plate because they are that bit thicker. In fact, they are the thickness of the second cutting plate thicker. So there are my die cuts. You can see how, how lovely that is, uh, how detailed it is, even the detail in between those beautiful stars. I'm going to put those to one side because I need those to dry before we take it to the next step. Now here's my uh, stencil again and I'm going to apply this to the front of this patterned paper. There's a text pattern on there and I'll find where I want to put it and just lay it down like that. Now I have applied some repositionable spray adhesive to the back of that to ensure that I get a good seal around the outside and I'll make sure that's firmly in place using my brayer. I appreciate we can't see an awful lot at this point but it all will be revealed. Now this is my Sizzix multi-tool. You probably recognize this. You can put a blade on one end, you can put the distressing tool on one end, both ends are usable and this is a relatively new product from Sizzix. It just twists into place and it's a blending tool so it's to use with your inks. Now what you're going to also get, and you do get a couple of spares with the tool itself, you get the foam circles and I've stuck these squares of velcro onto the base of each of the distress colors so I can keep track of them and what I do is work this now over the top of my stencil film it's a nice angle to work with. It's almost like using a pen. So you can use it like that if you wish. I kind of like using it like this because it means that I can see exactly where I'm going all the time. So I'm not over the top of it. And I'm sure it helps you guys as well. So we'll ink into that. One of the great things, one of the things I love about stencil film is the fact that it's very smooth. Not only does it give you a lovely crisp edge for working through, but it is incredibly smooth. So it allows the blending tool to flow over the top of the paper. So it doesn't drag. Now, if I was using, oh, say normal paper, say copier paper, for example, that kind of grade, um, first of all, it wouldn't preserve a good edge, especially when you start applying wet things like this distress ink dries pretty quick, but it is it is wet, it is an ink, so that can soak into the edge and become absorbed and it will affect the edge of your paper, of your stencil rather. But I'm going into the this is antique linen as I said, and when when I want to change colours. Rather than reaching for a new blending tool, I simply go to the base this time 
we are looking at Rusty Hinge. Now, this is a brand new pad, and I wanted to start with a brand new pad because this is an important little tip. A lot of people give up on distress sinks the first time they use them because what they don't do is they don't prime the pad. What I mean by that is pressing it into the pigment really deep, letting that soak it up, and then what you need to get is a separate piece of paper and really push that in, rub most of it off, and you'll notice here, you can see that hard edge? That's what happens with a brand new foam blending tool. That's why these need to be primed, um, why you need to rub off most of the ink when you first use it as well. So. That's fine, that's where I want it to be. This is Rusty Hinge. Now I'm going to work into this blending again with over the top of that stencil. It's a lovely rich colour. Um, it's an orange, but I like to keep it with my browns. I don't know why. But it's it's a lovely it brings a lovely warmth when you're using when you're using browns. So there we are, that is Rusty Hinge, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So I'm going to replace the top on that. Oh, we'll put these off to one side for a second. And Vintage Photo, this is an old favourite of many of you. I know it's one of Tim's personal favourites as well. So this also is very warm, but it has a, written, a richness to it as well. So. We'll blend through over the top of the stencil and then just put it to one side. Now, I could spritz into this or do something like that, but I'd rather just leave it as it is because what I'm going to do now is peel away that stencil and you'll see the image that's been left. Now, that's lovely by itself. It only tells part of the story, really. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring these two inks back in and we're going to go around the edges of our paper. Like so, so concentrating on the corner and then just working around the edge, just blending it to give it that kind of vintage mellow vibe. Oh, incidentally, while we're talking, um, if there's anything, I mean, with the chapter three dies are out now. Uh, if there's anything that you guys want to see, if there's anything you want to see more of, if there's any techniques that you would like to see, then just drop me a line. Um, underneath the vlog, there is a box where you can put your comments. So um, let me know what you like, what you enjoy, what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of even. Um, and it's on all the blogs, so you, you can comment. And, you know, it's, it's that engagement with you folks, the makers, that really informs us going forward. Um, you know, because we want to do stuff that you guys enjoy as much as anything. So we'll just come back with the vintage photo. Uh, just keeping very much now to the edges of this card, almost kissing the edge, not, not going too far in. And that'll give us some, some lovely contrast. And that's a contrast which you will see when, now if I take a piece of white card, we can see the difference right there. Look at the edges, there, that really does make a difference. Uh, and we're gonna be working with a lot of different elements, so it helps with your contrast. It helps if we can pick up those edges. I've also got, while I'm here with my vintage photo, this is a piece of corrugated card which has been cut to size. I'm just going to pick those edges up again. Um, if you wanted to as well, you, you could, if you want to make the edge even more stark, you could come in with walnut stain, even, even black soot. It's entirely up to you. But there we are. That's good to go. Replace the top, that's my inking done. When you finish, simply replace that. And then 
If you want to use your craft knife, you can take that off, put it to one side somewhere safe. Wonderful little tool, really handy, lovely ergonomic soft handle that's ridged there, so very, very comfortable to use. Um, now, let's get back to where we were, and we're going to assemble all of our different elements before completing our card. So this is all the stuff that we need to complete uh, this card. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to take my stag. Remember that I cut the stencil, then I cut this complete stag. I've applied some adhesive to the rear of this and incidentally it's a good tip actually. If you want to use Sizzix adhesive sheets, they're absolutely ideal. If you've got very fine die cuts like this and you don't want to get really messy using your PVA, then apply adhesive sheets to the back prior to cutting. Simply peel the backing off and stick it straight in place. That's, that's another way around it, whether you're using these or the colorized dies. Um, it will save you a lot of time and, and a considerable headache somewhere down the line. Um, now, next I'm going to use, now I'm using my stapler. I'm going to attach this like so before taking some double sided tape. The double sided tape I'm going to apply a couple of bits. Well no, actually I'm just going to apply the one for now. But I'm going to place it there on the back because I want to put twine around the center and this is the best the best way to do that well certainly in my experience so we'll come up there like so come back across make sure you press it in there and mm, I think I'm gonna get the get the lines crossing so that's it and there's my twine secured now the 25 and this lovely, remember, this is a star trim, this is dried now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a nick in there using my Sizzix scissors. Um, but to pick this up, I want to be using some gilding wax. And that's one of the wonderful products which brings 3D embossing to the fore. I'm going to start with bronze, and again, I'm working off the card so that I know I've got an even spread on my fingertip. Um, when you start applying this, it really brings that embossed texture to the fore. Uh, if it wasn't great before, wow. Certainly is now. So that's the bronze. And I'm also going to apply a little bit of gold, just to pick out the detail. The gold obviously being slightly brighter. I like to use the two because it, it it gives a sense of variegation rather than it takes away from that uniformity. And I'll just get the excess off my finger like so. Mm. And it's coming, it's really coming through the smell of uh, orange oil. I don't know if you can smell it at home, but of course you can't. I'm kidding. Right now, we're going to put these together onto the card. Thus, and I'm going to have it kind of at a slight angle as well. And again, because we're going for the kind of industrial look, we're going to put that there. And then the 25. Mm, yeah, something like that. Right. So that's there. They're in place. That's nearly finished. Now, I want to bring a bit of a splash of colour. So I've got this, I've got this piece of red card. Um, and, oh no, I'm not going to stick it down with my tape. Now you'll note in my base card, what I've done, I've stamped using splatter stamps and the, uh, the sort of the coffee rings. And I'll see where to put that. Just move the elements about until you get it kind of harmonious, until it's, until it's where you like it, until it's pleasing. There's no right or wrong. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters to me. Then we'll come in again. I think I'll use I'll use my stapler one more time. Attach that there, and finally to the top. Maybe one coming over over the edge. Um, 
Now that is that for this mate. Uh, I'm, I love the detail, it is absolutely stunning, it's really cool, I hope you can see that clearly. Now there is one other thing I want to do and for that I'm going to bring my machine back in. So I'm going to be using the transfer and emboss pads. Now this consists of a plastic pad, slightly thicker than a cutting mat, and this silicon mat. And it's for using transfer films, but it's also for embossing into your dies. Now if you use wafer thin dies, you can actually uh, emboss with them, or you can die cut, and then while the die, while the card remains in the die, you can add the embossed details by pressing it through the center. That's what these are all about. There are online videos explaining exactly how to do that. But what I'm going to do today is take uh, a piece of, this is kind of a bronzy metallic card, and I'll reach back and grab my stag. Now, because what I want to do now, rather than cut it, I want this to emboss into the card. So I'll do it face down, so the blade is now facing upwards with the card on top. Then I'll put my silicon mat in place before finally putting the impressions pad. There. And the impressions pad is what, as it goes through the machine, that provides the pressure. Now, it's wonderful being an expert in die cutting because sometimes you come unstuck. What I actually neglected to do was put my cutting mat in place. Without the cutting mat, you go nowhere. So I could have edited that out, but I'm keeping it in. I'm keeping it in. So even though I do this 24-7, that's right, I never sleep, I still make schoolboy errors like that. So we're running that through. The silicon rubber is pressing the card into the die. And then what we get, my friends, is this lovely impression. So the die has now embossed into the card. I'm, I'm sure you can see how lovely and clean that is. And if I take if I take my machine away for a second, the next thing the next thing that I want to do with this is cut around it. So right around the outside edge, I want to be using the inside of this. And what that gives you is this. So that's it, once it's been trimmed to size. And then when I add my other die cut, those little facets which have been embossed, this sort of domed, and it makes a big difference, particularly when it shifts in the light. And eventually what I want is something like this. You can see there, when, when I start moving this in the light, you can see those domed facets where it's been embossed. So it's quite different from putting it on a flat uh, piece of card. It's, it's quite effective. You can see we use one of the circle words as well. There's our star trim and in the background is one of our framelits, one of our fancy label framelits, one of my favorite dies. So we got those two. Now, why not die cut the stack from, remember how we inked on the background? Why not trim that to size and stick it behind a die cut? Maybe say a gold die cut like that. So that's another way of using this. Now, this could be a wonderful tree ornament. You can get these bits of wood from all sorts of places these days. So we stamped in the background. That's a lovely tree ornament. Or we can simply pop it into a frame. Uh, there you go. So this. There's four little projects using using that stag head, even though these two are the same, obviously, but just in different settings. Now, we talked about some uh, the four different dies that come in the set, and here is our lovely, that's the Starburst, and you can see there we've got silver, white, and this lovely aqua colour. That's all there is to it. You don't need anything more, just keep it simple. Then there's our bauble. Now this was created in the same way that I just showed you with the bronze card. So we've got the, the blue on the inside is kind of domed. Um, and the, the bow comes from a set called Christmas Ribbon, which comes with two large Christmas Merry Christmas die cuts. Uh, you can see we've embossed, uh, we've cut the word joy. So here we used it in the circle. Here we used it as an aperture um, through the card. And finally our star trim 
which again, 3D embossing looks fantastic in metallic card. Last but not least, um, jingle all the way, it's our Christmas tree. And you can see that what I've done is I've cut an aperture through the centre of the card. I've inked through that uh, onto a piece which sits underneath and then put the silver die cut in place. Really rather effective. Lovely, lovely set. Um, so that's our Geo Christmas. But we did talk about our circle words and how they are designed to work with our dimensional domes. And here's another couple of cards now. You can see here, this is the snowflake and the wreath. Now that is a set. They work beautifully independently, but of course they are sized to work around these lovely domes, which you can use to make a shaker card used to make whatever you want, but there are lots of dies which are sized to fit with these domes. You can see we get the dimensional ribbon as well with the wreath and snowflake. Um, just very well thought out, very versatile, which is no less than we would expect from Mr. Holt. And there, my friends, we have it. There you go, lots of fun, I'm sure you'll agree. It's a great die set. If you're thinking about your Christmas makes, I know if you're watching this when it's posted, it's July, it might be a little early, but I know you guys like to get started sooner rather than later. It's a fantastic set. I'm sure you're going to have lots of fun with it. Thanks for watching today. And remember, if you do want any more inspiration or if you simply want to find out more about our products, then go to sizzix.co.uk. Bye.